Hey everyone, it's me Catherine. Happy New Year! It's 2020, another year for lots of reading to be done and lots more books to be excited for. But in order to sort of like close out 2019, I just thought I'd have a quick look back at all the books that I've read throughout the year, starting from the very beginning. This could take a while, so let's just get straight into it. What is this? Okay, so we'll start with January, which was the month of rereads for me because that two of my most anticipated books of 2019 were coming out um, in January and February. Um, so I had like a massive reread and probably it was the best, January was the best reading month out of the entire year. Um, I spent it rereading the, um, Oh my god. I spent it rereading the Shadow and Bone trilogy, which is Shadow and Bone, Siege and Storm, Ruin and Rising, and I... I loved it. Like, I've done reviews on these books separately. I did a, I've done a spoilery chat after the reread with some new thoughts on it. If you want to check any of those out, I have already um, spoken my thoughts about this series on the channel, but just gonna reiterate that I... Like, I love this series. I love The Dark Thing, I love Alina, I love everyone actually. Like, I adore this series and this reread sort of sealed it as one of my favourites of all time. Um, so that was a good time. I also reread the Six of Crows duology, um, which Six of Crows um, like again, I've I've got reviews on Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom already on the channel. If you want to, if you want to hear more of my like in depth, in depth. I don't know if I ever go in depth, but in depth thoughts. Um, but again, a duology. I adore. I love this world so much. I love Lee Bardugo's writing so much. Six of Crows, my children. I I love it so much. And honestly, I couldn't have started the year any better than rereading those. I also read The Language of Thorns uh, by Lee Bardugo for the first time uh, this month, that month, January, we're not, I mean this month, but this month last year. Anyway, <laughs> for the first time uh, back in January 2019, um, which is a collection of short stories, so short fairy tales um, set in the Grisha world, which were which were like, I, 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 some of them were better than others, some of them were a bit okay, some of them, but um, they're sort of like, they're, 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 they're set in the Grisha world, so it's different world, different things, but they're familiar because they're sort of based on um, fairy tales that we know. Um, there's sort of like an Ursula uh, origin story in there, which was one of my favourites out of it. I can't remember what it's called, I haven't got the book with me. I should have been prepared for this. I should have been prepared for this, but I'm not. So here we are. Um, but that was definitely one of my favourites. There's also um, a Hansel and Gretel sort of one, uh, um, but that's... yeah, that's... they're very dark. I'll say that very dark, but I enjoyed them a lot and I enjoyed them a lot. I also reread Truth Witch and Wind Witch in January, the first two books in the Witchland series by Susan Dennard, another one of my favourite series. I adore this so much. I actually listened to the audiobooks to them this time round, which are narrated by Cassandra. I want to say Campbell, but I'm not 100%. But I think she, if you if you're looking for a new audiobook to listen to, like I highly recommend, because um, she does the voices and she does the accents. Some of them, I mean, I can't speak to the, to the quality of the accents, but I found it to um, enhance my enjoyment of the reading. I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed listening to it a lot, um, and I think I already have. Again, I think I have a review of um, th these two on the channel already, <laughs> which will be linked somewhere for you to check out if you want to hear more of my thoughts. But I love The Truth, the, the, the Witchland series. I love um, Safi and Isolde and the friendship that they've got going on. And I love the world and the magic and it's just a good time, a good time. I also read Sight Witch for the first time, which is a novella, which is, I believe it's a prequel, but um, it, yeah, it's a prequel, 
novella. Um, it's set before and it um, sort of tells us more about um, sight witches, which we don't really know much about. Um, but we follow uh, Ryber, who we meet um, in the in the, well in, in Truth Witch, and she's also in uh, Wind Witch. I think towards the end, uh, where we see a little bit more about her history and how she met um, Cullen, and um, learning more about the site. Which and it also gives us some insight, um, which it gives us some knowledge, arms us with knowledge for when we read uh, Blood Witch. So if you haven't read Sight Witch. Um, but you're reading the Witchland series, don't miss it out because it gives you some background information um, that you'll that'll come up in Blood Witch. But yeah, so that is the last of the books that I read in January. So not a bad time in January, but yeah, Sight Witch, good. I also listened to the audiobook. That is got a couple of um, vo um, voice actors. Well, narrators, that's the one, narrators. So Cassandra Campbell makes an appearance, but Ryber is done by, oh my God, what was her name? Oh God, it was so, it's a year ago. It's a year ago, it's a year ago now. So I will put that on, but she also did a great job for as She was the voice of Ryber, um, which was good. Really enjoyed it. So that was my January. Moving on to February, I read a total of three books in February. The first of those being one of my most anticipated books of 2019 which was King of Scars by Leo Bardugo which is the first book in a Nikolai I want to say it's a duology um and I was so excited for it and I enjoyed it I did enjoy it um I think I have some thoughts again <laughs> a lot of thoughts about Leo Bardugo's books but I've got some thoughts which I'll link for you to check out if you're interested in more because I've got some spoilery ones as well um, but I liked it. There were some things I didn't quite like and the ending was a bit mm, In my opinion, but overall I enjoyed it. It was really nice being back in this world with these characters and seeing how um, How they've been getting on uh, after the events of the Shadow and Bone trilogy and the Six of Crows duology um, So that was really nice really good and I did enjoy it. I did enjoy it uh, Then I uh, read or listened to <laughs> The Gilded Wolves by Rashni Chakshi and this, the book itself, I loved it. It's very Six of Crows um, and it this is, it was set, it's set in, it's like historical but I don't know if it's like alternate, it's like an alternate universe sort of thing where this magic exists so it's like, I suppose historical, historical fantasy, historical urban fantasy, uh, I don't know because isn't there a sense of lost knowledge? Oh my god, it's so long. I should have looked up a synopsis. But anyway, it's very Six of Crows vibes. Very Six of Crows vibes. But I really enjoyed it. The audiobook, mm, it's split. It's told from two perspectives. We have a guy whose name I've forgotten and a girl whose name I've already also forgotten. I'm so bad at names. I'm so bad at names. Um, the, the lady narrator great job she was amazing the man narrator um his voices his dialogue amazing his in betweeny bits the bits that aren't dialogue it sort of sounds like he's narrating a true crime episode it was bizarre and while i sort of adjusted to it i never warmed to it it was very weird very jarring at times like i if you can I recommend reading it physically or getting someone else to read it for you um, but the audio book like it's, it's so sad because the the lady narrator does a cracking job she was amazing really enjoyed it but he just it was just especially in comparison to the dialogue his dialogue was great there was emotion in there and he did accents and stuff and then the main bits it was it split open the marble hissed and steamed as his historian stumbled out of it and fell against him. Enrique gasped, shaking himself. You hid me in a minotaur? Why couldn't Tristan make a hiding dimension in a handsome Greek god? It was an, an, a bizarre experience, um, but the book, excellent. 
the first in a series all being oh, hopeful I'm sure I'm sure it's a part of a series because with that ending it has to be part of a series it's not if it's not <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do and then the last book I read in February which came out in February one of my another of my most anticipated reads of 2019 which was blood witch which is the third well the fourth book but the third full length um novel in the witchlands series by susan dennard and this <sighs> i mean we're still early in the year so we'll wait and see how i feel later on but i have a feeling that this was my favorite book of 2019 this I haven't been able to reread it because it hurt like it it, it it sort of it's very emotional it's it was a roller coaster of a ride and it asked a lot of questions and answered very few of them um but things happen I, I do have I think I did do a review of this I was gonna say that I didn't but I think I did do a review slash maybe a spoilery chat for this because I had a lot of feelings that I just needed to sort of like spew out um but yes definitely I think one of my favorite if not my favorite book of the year we'll see the the year is young okay so the first book I read in March was a heartbreaker and one you've probably heard of it is the poppy war by fuck <sighs> rf is it RF Cat? Oh my god, what's her name? Quang. Fuck, I've forgotten it. I'm so bad at names. I'm so bad at names. But anyway, The Poppy War is the first book in a series of some length. I don't know how long it is because I know there's been a second book. I think there might be a third one, but I don't know if there's going to be more beyond that. But this is another one of my favourites. I completely forgot I read that this year. Another one of my favourites. I listened to it on audiobook and it's by it's read by uh one of my favorite which is going to be one of my favorite narrators um and it's uh emily woozella her voice is amazing i love her voice so much i could listen to it all day but the poppy wall man is it dark i had no idea what i was getting in, into when i started reading it honestly had no idea when, it, when I started it, I thought it was going to be like a nice, well not nice because she gets bullied and it's hard, but a sort of like a school story, except it's war school, and then it just, oh boy, it gets dark and uh, it's very dark. Like I would not pick this up on a whim. I would, if you're going to read it, I would look up, spoiler free reviews, but look up reviews, look up triggers, because yeah because it, it is dark it is very dark as war is and bearing in mind these are only children like they're teens slash young adults and it's dark and uh it takes uh she takes some uh, inspiration from like actual real life events so the poppy war is actually a thing that happened um and you can see the parallels between the, because it said it's a fantasy world, but you can see the parallels between the fantasy places and countries and the real life ones. Um, so like the UK slash Britain is definitely in there. Um, not the good guys, because when were we ever? Um, but it takes place in fantasy, uh, a fantasy country that's basically tan fantasy China. Um, and there's definitely um, Japan, again, not the good guys. Um, and the Nan, is it Nanjing or Nanking? I think it depends on the sound shift or the, the, the way that we stopped Nanjing, Nanking massacre, which was horrific. Um, but yeah, it's just horrific, but also it's amazing and like it's epic, epic, epic. Okay, so then I started some rereads because I started re listening to the Witch Please podcast which I find hilarious. So I started rereading the Harry Potter books along with the episodes. Um, I got as far as number five. Um, and then as with everything, I stopped and just didn't start again. So I haven't finished the podcast again and I haven't finished reading through the Harry Potter series. Um, but you know, hey who, are well, you gonna have read it before? It's not like, it's not the end of the world. It's not like I don't know what happens. I also read a non-fiction book in March, which is In the Land of Invented Languages 
by somebody who I can't remember, I will put that on. I really need to make a point to remember names because I, I know I'm terrible at remembering, but I just don't do anything about it. So that should be on screen who wrote that. Um, and someone who is very interested in languages, this was, uh, this was really interesting to me. Um, it, 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 I can't remember. She basically, the, she basically goes through, she um, starts learning Klingon, she goes to conventions. Um, so it's basically about uh, made up languages. And I think we learn a bit about, uh, it mentions Esperanto. There's a load of other like failed, um, the, 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 the failed attempts at creating languages. And obviously like the, um, uh, Tolkien and his, his creating languages and like how he basically just wrote a book to incorporate this language that he'd made, that, that he'd created, um, which is, I just find that stuff really interesting. Language really interests me. I like learning languages. I like learning about language. Um, so this was right up my street. So if you're interested in languages, maybe you want to check that one out. Um, so yeah, that was, that was March pretty much. Um, rereads. The Poppy War and made up languages. I mean, the same made up like all languages aren't like created. They got to be created at some point. But I can't think about that because it just makes me feel funny. Okay, then moving on to April. I read a total of one book in April and it was an audio book narrated by Emily Rosella because I love her so much. And it is Nine Fox, it was Nine Fox Gambit um, by Yoon Ha Lee, which is the first in the, was it Rave? Oh, I've forgotten the name of the trilogy. Raven Stratagem, Stratagem. Not 100% sure how you're supposed to pronounce that. But this is like sci-fi and it's maths heavy. Like there's a lot, it mentions stuff about maths and it's cylindrical, calendrical, not cylindrical, calendrical stuff and how they've got like this thing based on Honestly, a lot of the sci-fi stuff, as it does in most sci-fi, I read that goes into detail. It just goes straight over my head. I like the, uh, I leave that for the characters to understand and work out. I'll just go through the characters and relationships. And this is, I think this one is my favorite out of the entire trilogy. Um, it's not a bad trilogy, didn't hate the trilogy. I enjoyed it a lot, but this first one, because I really liked the relationship between, I'm gonna call them our two, main protagonist because I've already forgotten. Kel, what was her name? Cheris and Jadal. Uh, I liked their dynamic and I just thought it was really interesting. I really enjoyed it. I liked it quite a bit. It helped that it was narrated by Emily Huzella, uh, whom I love very much. <laughs> but that was about it for my April, so. May, didn't read a damn thing in May. Moving swiftly on, June. June! June, I read one book. It was A Closed and Common Orbit by Becky Chambers. This is the second book in the, I don't know what it's called, um, but the first one is uh, the, the Long Way to a Small Angry, yeah, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers, which this, they, they follow two different sets of characters, so they're more companion than like, it's more companion than a direct sequel, although it does follow one of the characters that or is it different? I mean, technically, you know what? We'll just say it follows a character that we know from, of, from um, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, but it takes place elsewhere. We don't see the Wayfarer again, and um, it's another story in space that I enjoyed, um, following new characters that I enjoyed, and um, it was just a good time. <laughs> and I liked it. It was a good time. Oh, moving on to July. I read the last two books in the, oh no, The Raven Stratagem was the name of the second book in that trilogy, so that's not what it's called. Machines. I don't remember what the trilogy is called. The trilogy has a name that I will put on screen for you to find for you because I don't remember what it's called. But th I read the last two books in this trilogy, which are The Raven's Tragedy and Revenant Gun, um, which I enjoyed. Again, we follow Cheris and Jadao and um, how the rest of the, 
the war, rebellion, revolution thing takes place and I liked them. I didn't enjoy them as much as I enjoyed the first one. Um, but I did I did like them and it wasn't like it wasn't like a bad end to the trilogy it wasn't a bad trilogy when I probably read again again narrated by Emily Wuzella who I would listen to read out the dictionary so <laughs> take from that what you will okay so getting on to August August looks like it was a better better reading month so first off we've got the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin I've been meaning to read a book by N.K. Jemisin for years and I finally did it. I finally did it after having her book for like a couple of years. I finally did it and I understand it was great. I liked it a lot. It's not what I was expecting, um, but it was really good. It's, um, it's an apocalyptic fantasy. I'm gonna say apocalyptic fantasy. Um, it's the, the story set, it's told from three different um, perspectives three over told over from three different periods in time um and they all sort of meld together towards the end to bring out the whole you know to, to show you the whole picture of how things went down and i really enjoyed it one of my favorite books of the year very very good um and i'm looking forward to reading the rest but yeah Everyone was right, N.K. Jemison is great. <laughs> then I read Good Omens after watching the series on Prime. I'm not gonna lie, I genuinely do not know how many times I've watched that series. I asked for the box set for Christmas. See, I used my sister's Prime to watch it so she could tell. She's like, why? She's like, Catherine, how many times have you watched this? Why are you still watching this? Because it's so good and I love it so much. I love it so much. Is there a feeling Crowley? Goals. And that's so why I got the book naturally and read it. And you know what? I enjoyed the book. It's definitely a book of its time um, because it was written. So in 1990, it was published. It's about as old as I am and um yeah it was good i think the tv series is better like it's not often i say that like usually the book's better but i will say the tv adaptation is an excellent adaptation and in my personal opinion i think it's better than the book this is coming from someone who didn't read it when it came out i do not have any attachments to the book or the story um, as I usually do when adaptations come out um, so maybe that has something to do with it but I honestly if you're wondering whether to watch the book watch the book read the book or watch the TV series if you can I recommend watching it I think it's excellent and I love it so much moving on from Goda oh I read Good Omens twice that month I forgot I'd done that so then I did some more Rereading, uh, I reread re the first two volume, the first two volumes of Monstrous, written by Marjorie Liu and the art by Sana Takeda. If you don't know about Monstrous, this is a a fantasy series. It's set in a uh, matriarchal society based. Ah, oh, I didn't know when it was based. It's based on like uh, historic Asia, and um, it's a world where there's. Uh, like sort of two types of people um, there's the people that look like there's the arc arcanics arcanics I think they're called arcanics which are sort of like uh, magical mystical beings that look um, different they tend to, ha to have some sort of like animal form some sort of different form and then we have the people that aren't arcanics um, who look like you and me um, and then we have Micah our main character who is an arcanic but she passes she can she looks she passes as someone who isn't she's missing an arm for reasons we're not told about so i don't know if that's something to do with her history or whether it's just something that she's never had it's never explained um and there's something a bit different about micah even beyond being an arcanic and this is such a it's a, it's it's weird and dark and i love it a lot it's quite graphic as well so with it being illustrated 
maybe stay away from it if you can't deal with like the graphic violence, gore, things like that. It's not pretty, but the art style is very beautiful and I love it so much. Um, but I reread those so I could then read Monstrous Volume 3, um, which at the time was the most recent release. There has since been a fourth one, which I got for Christmas, which I haven't read yet because <laughs> why would I read something I got immediately? Why would I do that? Um, but again, three, great. All good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, moving on to September. September, where I did another reread in prep for another book that I, I much highly anticipated book from me. Uh, I reread Carry On by Rainbow Rowell in preparation for Wayward Sun coming out in October. <sighs> I love Carry On. I love Carry On a lot. I think I might have mentioned it a couple of times on the channel but I adore Carry On and it's probably... No, I think it definitely is. <laughs> my favourite book of all time currently. My favourite book of all time. Um, I like it a lot. I love it a lot. I was very excited for when Wayward Sun came out so I reread it. I also finally finished, because I started this book when it first came out, um, and it's the final book in the Memoirs by Lady Trent series um, by uh, Marie Brennan and it's Within the Sanctuary of Wings, the final book in the series. I started it, I got it, pre-ordered it, started it when it came out and then never finished it. Um, for reasons like it just it just never happened and I finally read it and it was really good and I'm really sad it's all over. <laughs> I mean I could just go back and reread them, it's not like I can't reread them. But it was a book, it was a series that was just right up my street, exactly my thing. Like it's a period, it's like historical fantasy except the fantasy isn't like magical battles and things like that. We basically follow a woman who wants to study dragons and other and all the other people that she meets along the way, all the cultures that she 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 goes to and 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 and, and stuff and all the different dragons and the information and there's even a language bit in it. Like, I mean, it it it's it's almost like it was written for me, especially this last one because we spent a lot of time with her trying to learn this new language and I enjoyed it a lot. Like it's not heavy on the language learning because it's not what this is um, but it just, it was such a good series and I'm sad it's done. So the first book that I actually finished in October was Temeraire by Naomi Novik which is the first book in the Temeraire series which is about, which is about a man who was once the captain of a ship but because dragon he's now uh, an aviator and his dragon is like I I've talked at length I did I think I have three four videos I have a spoiler for review and then I have spoiler chats because the book's split into split into three parts and I have spoiler chats for each of those parts because this book gave me a lot of feelings it's very good the back makes it seem like this captain's gonna resent this dragon but those two are friendship goals. I love them so much and if anything happened to them I would die. It's really good. If you haven't started it, highly recommend it. Highly, highly recommend it. This is definitely- I forgot I read this. How could I forget? This is so good. It was so good. Definitely one of my favourite reads of the year. Probably up there with Blood Witch. Definitely up there with Blood Witch. I enjoyed this so much and I'm looking forward to continuing with the series this year. Like I, I I don't want to finish it because what if bad things happen to them but I also want to finish it because it's really good and I want to read it and I don't. <sighs> feelings. Speaking of feelings, we have Wayward Sun which came out at the beginning of October and which I read and while it's not up there with Carry On, like it's a different type of book from Carry On. Carry On was very, I, I want to say happy, it made me feel good, whereas Wayward Sun, um, it, I mean it's not everybody, there isn't always a happily ever after. Um, and this, oh man it broke my heart, like it was hard 
to read this because Simon, after every after everything that happened in the previous book, Simon has is basically going through a very bad depressive episode, and Baz and Pe- 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 Penny, neither of them know what to do with it, so they go on a road trip, which. I mean, it ended as well as you would expect it to end from those three, but it was just really hard reading that and knowing that... It was really hard and I did like it, um, but I had other stuff going on in October which meant I couldn't give it all my attention, so I do intend to reread that this year, probably maybe even this month. Um, to try and sort of like gather all my thoughts again and maybe do a video on it because I did want to talk about it um, but I had, I had other things going on in October <laughs> other things going on on to the next book for October I finally finished Want by Cindy Pond I started this about two three years ago and it will have been two years ago. I got it for the first Christmas in this new house, which was 2017. And I finally finished it before the Christmas of 2019. So yeah, two years I've had this book on the go and I finally finished it. I was so close to the end. I had no, I, I, I mean, I knew how close to the end it was, but I didn't know. Um, and I finished it and it was good. I enjoyed it. And I, I never looked up whether there was going to be another one. Because I'm sure I heard things about there being a second one, but I don't... Uh, at least there was another book by Cindy Pond with a similar cover, which, you know, it could just be completely different. Completely different. But I have a feeling it's not, and I never looked that up. So I should probably check out... I should probably get that checked out this year. Uh, because I enjoyed it. It was good. I liked it. It's um, set in the future in Taiwan, um, and pollution is... It's off the charts, basically. If you want to survive, you have to have a suit, and these suits are very expensive. Um, so Taiwan, at least, is split into the Mays and the Yos. Um, and the Yos are the people that have, and the Mays are the people that don't. Um, they're the poor people. And we follow a group of teens, young adults, who um, are trying to topple the maker of these suits. Um, because if they can't have access, if the rich people can't have access to these suits, then maybe finally they will try and do something about the pollution. Um, but because they currently have access to these suits, they don't see a problem, so everything's fine for them. Um, but the poor people are dying. Um, which is quite relevant, I guess, in a way. It uh, definitely will be uh, at some point if we don't get ourselves sorted. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. And I, if there is another one, I will read it. And then because it's October I wanted to read something sp spooky um, so I read Uzumaki by Junjo Ito um, which is spirals. The art mate, the art in this is so like it's not even like this it was creepy like the art style for me is the creepy which definitely enhanced the reading of this but it's basically a short story set in this place that I've forgotten the name of And each story is set around, it's the spirals that come out in some way, like the town's being taken over by the spiral. And it's creepy and a bit unsettling, very weird. And I liked it a lot. <laughs> Definitely looking forward to reading more from Junjo Ito and uh, are they all spooky? Like, are they all? Well, I mean, it's not even spooky. It's stuff like weird. It's weird. So if they're all weird or creepy, I mean, I enjoy weird and creepy, so that's fine. I will definitely be looking forward. But because it's October, I had to read at least something spooky, uh, or creepy, or weird, and that definitely fit the bill. So that was it for October, and I think I have a feeling that was it for the for November as well. Oh no, I read a book in November. I'm very surprised, very proud of myself because again, what happened in October carried on to November. Um, but yeah, so October, I read Caliban's War by James S.A. Corey. This is the second book in the Expanse series, which is a sci-fi series. I think it also has an Amazon show, Amazon Prime show, um, which I haven't watched 
because I don't know how much the first I was gonna watch the first season, but I don't know how much they meld. You know how you know how sometimes they borrow bits from the future um, installments. So I'm gonna wait till I've gotten to at least a good few books in front. But this carries on from the first one, *Leviathan Wakes*, which I read. That was about three years ago. Um, set in space, but it's not like the future space where everything's easy peasy. It's where traveling through space, um, you feel. You can feel it, you know, there's like G, G force, that's a thing, right? I know science, I know space. Um, and there's talk of gravity and things. Basically, Earth has colonized at least some of the solar system. And uh, there's also a killer goop. I mean, I don't think the goop itself is killer, but it's why, well, yeah, it is. It is, it's also very intelligent. And we follow, um, oh my god, what's his name? Holden. Holden. Is his name James Holden? I want to say his name is James Holden. I'm so bad at names. As he gets roped into... I feel like this one was more political. Um, which I don't mind. I enjoy a nice bit of politicking um, than the first one. Um, but still the goo sort of like looming after the events of the first book and it was a good time. I enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to reading more from this series. And then December, I had read one book in December and that is Red Seas Under Red Skies by Locke Lamora. This is the second book in the Gentleman Bastard sequence and we're following Locke after the events of the first book. Whew. And um, what what he's been doing with himself. If you don't know the Gentleman Bast Bastard sequence, the first book, The Lies of Locke and Mora, it's a fantasy series and it follows Locke and his ma band of merry thieves who enjoy thieving, they enjoy heisting, they enjoy taking from the rich. And they get in a bit too deep in the first one and I mean shit hits the fan and then we're dealing with the aftermath, um, at least for some of Red Seas and the Red Skies, and then they do pirating and stuff happens. More heisting, more stealing, some more successful than others, and it was a good time. I mean, it's also a bad time, but like for the, in the, for the characters, like I had a good time. I had a good time the whole time, but like for the characters, it was a bad time. But again, I enjoyed it. It was great. It was an end to 2019 and that is it. There you have it. Those are all the books that I read throughout 2019. Favourites probably being Blood Witch, Temeraire and The Poppy War. I mean there were others like I enjoyed, there were lots of books I enjoyed. Like I enjoyed Wayward, I mean I enjoyed all of them actually. I don't think I read a book I didn't enjoy this year. Um, but they just don't were all top top reads but those definitely top three um fifth season also one of my favorites wayward son definitely king of scars i enjoyed i've already forgotten everything else i read that, that this year that last year um but yeah that is it that is everything i read in 2019 let me know in the comments below what your favorite book read of 2019 was or reads if you have more than one is because i always find it hard to choose just one out of everything partly because I can't remember half the books I've read so <laughs> there we go but so there you have it those are all the books I read in 2019 thank you so much for watching how do I usually end this video oh my god it's been so long let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and I will hopefully that's it thank you so much for watching and I will hopefully see you in another video bye